Hi, it's Petrina. Welcome to my channel and I am going to be giving you a garden tour of my spring 2022 garden. Um, we just came back from a six week RV uh, trip. You can see our RV in the background there. Um, and uh, I let my garden go by itself for six weeks, uh, which I grow an organic garden. So that means uh, it didn't get fertilized. And that also means it didn't get any pest control whatsoever in those six weeks. Um, I got back late last night around 4 a.m. And I kind of snuck around the garden a little bit to see what kind of bugs I have going on. And um, really not bad bug damage. Uh, there's definitely some issues with army worms. I found one that was like that big. Uh, he was huge and he was eating one of my um, winter squash uh, blooms, like the, the female part that hadn't been fertilized yet, so that's okay, or pollinated yet, so that's okay. Um, but I got rid of him and a couple of his friends, and then um, today I walked around the garden as I was kind of cleaning up a little bit, and by a little bit, I really mean a little bit, and you'll see in a minute. <laughs> Um, I did notice that uh, I have quite a few louvers. Uh, I think that's what they're called, Love, lovers or louvers. There's a type of grasshopper that um, just devastates this area in, um, in central Florida here. And um, in case I didn't mention this before, I'm in zone 9A, kind of like 9A right on the border of 9B. Um, so they're really prevalent here. So we have to find them when they're young and we have to uh, unfortunately kill them while they're young. And I do that not using pesticides, but um, hand picking and destroying. And that's the same thing I do with army worms. Um, and then for the pickle worms and things like that, um, I usually use spinocide or spinonide. I can't, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Or BT. Um, I haven't had the greatest luck with my BT. I think it might have been old or defective. Uh, but the the spinal side is working really well this year. So I sprayed that before I left six weeks ago and it looks great. Um, I always have a goal for my garden. Um, so for spring, my goal was to be able to successfully grow corn, winter squash, and there's three different kinds. There's butternut, acorn, and spaghetti squash. And then um, being able to grow onions and garlic. Um, and the onions and garlics, I, I did kind of similar uh, in that I did three different plantings, um, three different varieties, and for the onions, I did three different types. So I did sets, starts, and seed. Um, sets were the least uh, successful. <laughs> and for garlic, I did three different varieties. I did um, inchulum, inchulum red, um, silver rose, and early Italian, I think, were the three varieties. And I planted them at three different times um, because I wasn't exactly sure of the correct timing. So they're all spaced out about three weeks apart. Um, and I actually got some garlic, which I am so stoked about. Um, it doesn't look perfect in terms of the, the, the clove and the bulb, um, but you'll see, I'll show you. But anyway, the corn is coming in. The winter squash, I have some success going on, so I'll show you that. Um, and like I said, the, the onions, I did have one bulb. I have a couple smaller ones that have bulbed, mostly from the sets. Um, sorry, not the sets, the starts. The sets never bulbed. Um, and I think I ended up getting a set that was an uh, intermediate, or uh, the midday, and not the short day, which you have to have a short day here. Um, I thought that the midday might work because they say that they're, they they work everywhere, but they do not work here in the south. I have learned that they got super big, so I am going to be able to do something with them. But I'm not; they're not going to bulb. Uh, it's very clear they were the first ones I put in. They're huge plants; they're not going to bulb. So anyway, um, I'm going to take you for a walk around my entire garden so that you can see everything. I am on like not even a quarter of an acre lot and like a huge portion of our lot is our big pool so i don't have a lot of garden space but um i do have uh eight raised beds um using galvanized steel um beds that i got off amazon and um i have a whole section of fruit trees and berry bushes so i'll show you around 
Um, we'll just go through this quickly and then what will happen is I'm going to do additional videos after this one that's going to talk about each individual one that I, I had success for so that we can go into how um, I grew those, what I did and the timing so and even the variety so that you can see maybe what might work better in your uh, garden. The first up on the garden tour is my little lemon tree and this poor thing has been through everything. As you can see here, um, they have lemons. There's some little guys, oops, some little guys, and some uh, bigger ones. So he has been replanted like two times. I had to move him, so I'm actually shocked that he's doing as well as he is. I just have a couple pots, and this is um, Roselle. Uh, it's like a Florida cranberry, and it creates these like buds, and then the buds, the calyx, which is what you're first starting to see right here. It's actually quite soon that it's blooming. Um, usually you start to see that later in the season, but I started these super early because I wanted um, them to grow much bigger than my plants were last year. All right, moving on to my first bed. These are the onion sets I was telling you about. And as you can see, they have just never bulbed, but they have gotten enormous. Huge. So I'm going to end up using those instead to make like a, uh, a garlic powder. Over here, what looks like it's dying is actually um, some kidney beans. Um, so they need to dry all the way. So these plants are just going to go ahead and die off. Um, and I'm going to see how they do there in my first year doing them. But it looks like I got pretty decent pods. I'm just going to see what happens once they um, dry. I've got a couple rosemary bushes. I've got a volunteer here, uh, tomato. I always get volunteers in this bed. Um, my strawberries are not looking great. Um, they actually produced while I was gone, so there was just like a bunch of rotten fruit right here. Um, next up is my squashes. You can already start to see that I've got some powdery mildew going on, which is not ideal, um, but um, that's kind of par for the course here in Florida. But what I do have here, let's see if I can get the camera to focus, is my first acorn squash. They, they took the longest last year, so I'm not surprised. Um, I have a few things that I'm letting go to seed, like my broccoli. Uh, that's definitely winter. Um, so I'm just doing that so that I can save the seed. And then this guy is my Karobi. And he got super big as you can see like very large i'm not sure that this is like great for eating but it's my first year ever growing them so i'm gonna see um how that tastes just you know and the next time i'll i'll get them when they're younger and here's a, another acorn squash that's coming in uh, this is the one that the that the army worm was chewing when i came in and he he did quite a bit of damage there so i'm gonna keep an eye out here is uh, another volunteer tomato, which I'm just gonna let go ahead. But here's all my garlic, which really doesn't look super great. It's all like falling over. But the cool thing is, I pulled a couple out. I have a garlic bulb. Um, they are starting to separate. So that means they were in there for too long. You can see the separation right here. So they won't store quite as long. Um, this one in particular separated a lot, so much so that it looks like the individual cloves that it produced actually are um, growing. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. I might just use them first or I might make like a garlic powder. And then I pulled this guy. He clearly has not bulbed yet. Um, so I'll use him for a garlic powder as well. Over here, one of my success stories. Once again, we have some powdery mildew going on, but this is a spaghetti squash and he is huge, monstrous. And there's so many more, like I have so many, and this is just three plants. Um, I have learned that with them, they do get the powdery mildew really badly. Um, but this year I have been able to grow them full size. Look at this beast, my hand and the size of that spaghetti squash. It's huge. So that's one of my favorite squashes. So I'm super stoked about the fact that I have so many of them. Um, and I think the plants will hold out long enough for those to cure. 
I have some more of my garlic here, or I'm sorry, my onions. And these are this, this one actually is the seed, but a few of these are the starts. Um, and you can see I have some balding going on, but man, they're small. So I'm just gonna let them continue. I have another broccoli that I'm gonna save the seed from. I had some good, um, some good success with broccoli this year. This is a mess. I don't know what I'm gonna do about all this. I put way too many plants right here for a vining uh, butternut squash. The, um, the spaghetti squash I showed you before, the, that one right in there, that is actually a uh, semi uh, bush variety, but this is actually Waltham's butternut. And I have several, several of these guys all along here. Um, here we go, here's some more. There's that one right there. There's a little guy right there. I'm not sure if he's fully pollinated, but we'll see. Um, so these are doing really well and I'm not seeing the powdery mildew yet. Um, and once again, this is a, a Waltham butternut squash. I'm very happy with it, but it did spread and it's uh, huge. And I put too many plants in a small space. Then I have my corn. Um, I did it in a block. Um, I did put like these lines up and these posts to hold it up because the years in the past that I've done them, they've fallen over and um, they didn't grow really well. And I have my first one with the tassel on top and my first one with the actual corn, um, which is right here And that purple. When that turns like brown, that will be done. I have a volunteer pineapple tomatillo. These guys come back every single year in this bed. Um, and I just let them grow because I do like the tomatillos. I don't use them as much. Uh, I use them a lot in the jam, weirdly enough, but um, I use them with like a strawberry and they become like almost like a, a lemon strawberry jam because they're pineapple-y, so they've got like a, a tropical type taste. This is my watermelon bed and this is very slow to take off. I have a few cuttings that I've done for some seeds and some plants. Um, here's a, a cranberry hibiscus. I love that one. I took a cutting because mine died. Here's some, um, this is um, stevia. Um, but anyway, this one isn't doing quite that good. It's not growing very fast compared to like the squashes and it was planted at the same time. This is a new bed. So new beds always take a little bit longer. They, they do better in like the third year, but the first and second year are always a little tough and you have to fertilize a lot. These are all my potatoes and they are all dying back. And I pulled one, here, let me go around here. I pulled one up partially, this guy right here, and you can see I have potatoes. So I know that there's potatoes in here. I'm trying to keep them covered for another day until I do a video where I pull those guys up. Um, besides the potatoes, I have some cantaloupe. That's what this guy is right here. Um, some cantaloupe growing in this bed. Once again, it was very slow, just like the watermelon. I have additional onion starts in here as well. You can see them. I kind of planted them all over because I was told that they help with the bug pressure. And I gotta say, I think that's actually helping. The garlic and the onions kind of planted all over the place have really helped with my bug situation because I did not have near the amount of bugs. So that could be because of that. It could be because of the time of year I'm growing it. Um, it could be a lot of things. So, but I'm gonna try to reproduce it. Oh, we got a friend. Check it out. Can you see them? We have our first ladybug. Right, I don't know, right there. You can see them. Yay! We have a friend. This guy is my mustard seed. They are very brittle, so I'm trying to be very careful with it until I can get these um, uh, in a paper bag so I can uh, pull the seeds off and I will make, it's supposed to be a brown mustard. Um, so I'll make a brown mustard with it, but I'm also saving the seed because this plant was amazing and it went all the way from the beginning of fall all the way to spring. Like it took a while to bolt um, for a, a winter crop. These are my kales, which are like little trees at this point. They're huge. It's a lacinato, I never know how to pronounce these things, a dinosaur kale. Um, and it's doing really well as well. It gave me all through the entire um, 
fall, winter, spring. I even took some on our RV trip um, and it's still growing. So I'm gonna trim off the bottoms, let it get like kind of tall. Um, and then here I have carrots. Let me see if I can show you guys one. Yeah. So right here, you can start to see the head of the carrot or the, the, the root of the carrot coming in. Um, these all, I pulled one just to see how they're doing. They're all nice thickness, um, but they're not quite long yet. So I'm gonna give them more time. I had some random carrots in other areas, so I pulled those. I have a couple strawberries here. Um, I think they got really shaded. <laughs> these are new strawberries. They usually do better at year two. Here are my tomatoes, which look just sad and pathetic. Um, I honestly don't know what's going on with them, but um, they're not, they're not growing enough leafy green. They're not, you know, they just don't have the, the amount of bulbs that I've had in, or I'm sorry, the amount of fruit that I've had in the past. So I'm not really sure, but I do have those volunteers. So, um, you know, I have tomatoes covered with the volunteers. These are different lettuces that I grow during the winter. And I, as you can notice, they are bolting. They took forever to bolt. I mean, I was gone for six weeks and this is as far as they got along. Um, that one's gotten obviously a bit further, but they still haven't even flowered yet. So definitely heat tolerant. So I'm gonna save these. I'm gonna save the seed from these. Um, I have a lemon balm over there that's just out of control. It's from the mint family. I didn't know that when I planted it. Um, I have some more Kurobi that has not bulbed yet. Um, haven't gotten that bulb on the bottom. It's a little outside of season for this guy, but um, he gets partial shade, so I'm hoping that maybe uh, I might get something. Uh, my sugar snap peas all happened while I was gone. Man, they're fast. But I let them go ahead and dry on here, and I'm going to pull these, and then hopefully I don't have to buy seed uh, for next year. This is like one of my favorite new plants. It has a beautiful flowers. You see those. It's completely edible. It's called Society Garlic, and it was actually my backup plant in case my garlic didn't work out. Um, it, you cut the greens, kind of like a chive, and um, it tastes and smell. It's very, very strong garlic. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be planting this soon, not in a bed, but like out front in front of my house, because um, it is really pretty, um, and it also is very good for you, kind of like garlic. You can eat the roots, but I think mainly most people just eat, you know, the greens. Um, I have my Everglades tomato here. It's got some Everglades on it. Um, I have never, I don't know what is wrong with me. I must be like the only person in Florida that cannot grow Everglades from seed. So um, the lady that I get all my fruit trees from, she um, pulled this one up out of her garden, which was a volunteer and gave it to me and I stuck it here and it's been doing great. So I'm gonna let some of these fall so that it self seeds itself and then I won't have to try to grow them again. Here's my broccoli, believe it or not. I'm growing broccoli in spring in Florida. It's a Brazilian broccoli. It's like a, um, um, it's not like a full headed, it's not a, a heading variety. It is like a broccolini variety. It'll grow small shoots um, before it goes to seed pretty quickly. I have a different kind of kale here. I think this is the red Russian kale. Um, I have cucumbers and they're doing pretty well. I have one right there little odd shaped but that's okay great still edible and then and one that I'm growing for the first time is this little skinny guy that's coming and crawling up the top here and that is a cucumelon I hear that they're slow to start compared to um, like the the regular cucumbers so I'm not surprised that it doesn't have any blooms yet but it likes to crawl and I don't think I gave it enough to crawl on <laughs> all right so now I'm gonna head over to my biggest failure for the spring. I'm going to show you my successes as well as my failures. These are my green stocks. I kept them short. Um, but as you can see, uh, pretty much everything bolted. And uh, I've got a lot of things that are dying. And I know why. Um, for the first four weeks, they did great. I have cameras at my house. And so I can look at my garden while I'm traveling. And they were doing really great for like four weeks. I watered them super well before I left. And then um, I noticed that we stopped getting rain. I mean, like hardly any rain. And so what happened was, is they all started to, to wilt 
and die out and I watered them super well when I just got back so they went three weeks or maybe two and a half without any water um, which is pretty phenomenal I mean when you think about it but um, couldn't last the full six weeks without help um, this is my basil that went to seed I'm gonna save that seed I've got some bell peppers here I got an assortment of things in here here's Swiss chard here's another type of Swiss chard here's some thyme I've got all kinds of stuff in here my pepper plants are very sad and I have to grow some new pepper plants, but that's okay because summer is great for peppers in Florida. Um, but I have a few that are hanging on and they actually, believe it or not, they actually look better right now than they did this morning when I first saw them. Um, this is a pink celery. I think it looks more pink on one of the ones back here you can see. Um, this is oregano. It's starting to perk up, so I'm happy about that. I got all my mint down here. I learned my lesson with the lemon balm, and I don't keep mint in my beds anymore. This I was really happy about, but this is a pineapple sage, I think. Um, and it's all blooming, so I'm going to save some of those and see if I can replant that. Um, this is sorrel. Very sad. Um, but sorrel grows back for me pretty easily so i'm just going to leave it alone and see what happens so those are my green socks this got really messed up from the um, freeze that we had we had a late freeze but i do have a pineapple growing which is awesome it's my first pineapple the plant looks terrible but it's growing that's why you don't cut the plants down that's why you let them just sit there after a freeze to see if they come back pretty windy out here right now but you can see I have peaches and I've been kind of thinning them because I don't want it's only like a three-year-old tree and I don't want it to uh, become overwhelmed um, then right here I have my lychee um, it I think these are gonna these are gonna bloom I have not seen it bloom yet this is my new uh, my new baby that I got right before I left please excuse all the weeds this is called a sherbet berry. So I'm really stoked about this. Um, can't wait to try those. This is my Barbados cherry, which is sad looking from all the freezes as well. And never bloomed for me. Not even once, and I've had it for two years. So it, if it doesn't get its job going, I might have to do something there. Um, this is a strawberry tree, also called a Jamaican cherry. I think. It has a lot of names. Um, this one produces all summer long. And it tastes like cotton candy. It's the only way I know how to explain it because it has like a crunchy center and the crunchy tastes like crystallized sugar and it reminds me of cotton candy. Love this. Just put it in the ground this year. Had it two years. It produced some fruit last year, but this year um, I suspect being in the ground, giving it its room to really grow and it's gotten twice as big, it will produce more. I have two blueberries. This is the first one. Blueberries. Yummy. Um, sorry, I'm eating while I'm showing you. Oh, they're so good. They kind of remind me of strawberries. It's weird. They don't taste like the blueberries in the store. They're so good, though. I can't remember exactly what variety this is, but it is meant for down here, uh, low chill hours. And this one did pretty well. I heard you need two, and I did notice the bees bouncing back and forth between them, and I did get quite a bit of blueberries on these two plants. And I suspect they're going to get bigger. This is my raspberry. Um, this is the first time it's bloomed for me. So we're gonna see if, uh, if it's a low enough um, hours for uh, fruit to form. But I've got a bunch of blooms, so that's the first step. Um, so if it does bloom um, and it does produce blackberries, then score, um, it's the right chill hour variety for this area. I wasn't sure. It was kind of, when I researched it, it was kind of on the fence. Um, I think it was like 200 hours or 300, 200 to 300 hours. And uh, most of my stuff here is 150 to 200. So right on the edge of whether it was appropriate to grow here or not. So we'll see. If it doesn't work out, this space is where I'm going to put mulberries because I hear they're very similar and they grow like weeds here. So besides all the weed. So if you enjoyed this video, um, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and um, in the coming days, I will be doing uh, videos on each one of my harvests, my garlics, my potatoes, 
um, the winter squash and hopefully fingers crossed the corn as well.